Well, my name is Peter Jugovic. I'm, I'm a family physician, actually. I, I live in the neighborhood, but I primarily practice actually out of uh, East York. At Toronto East Journal, I work as, actually as an inpatient uh, family medicine specialist. So I'm your family doctor when you come into hospital. Right. The expansion uh, over the last few years it has uh, progressively, uh, exponentially, I think, increased. We're going up to, I think, a total of 21 airplanes that will be uh, flying out of the airport uh, as of the new year. Um, so that does raise some significant concerns, I think, with the, again, with the noise and the air pollution. Well, the air pollution for a lot of people exercising or just in the environment, absolutely, I think there's a risk. Um, it was one of the big attractions for me to come to this and live in this community was the fact that we're on this great waterfront. It's a great place to, to live, to exercise, to enjoy the, the great outdoors in the heart of the city. It's, it's really, this, this area can really be the heart, of the, the crown jewel, if you will, of Toronto. Uh, to have it sullied by an airport like this, uh, with the pollution that goes on, is, is, a, is a real big shame. The people that I see out every day, if you go across to the park, you'll see people playing baseball right now, people playing soccer, you see people along the, the, the walkway here, they're cycling, they're, they're skateboarding, they're jogging, I see that on a constant daily basis. All those people are doing exactly what their family doctors are telling them to do. Get out, exercise, enjoy the outdoors, do what you can to try to be more active. Oh, nice. the helicopters overhead, these episodic kind of bursts of loud noise. There certainly are some health concerns. It's unpredictable. It wakes people up in the middle of their sleeps, uh, disturbs them as they're trying to get to sleep. They happen at uh, sometimes fairly random times. We don't know when they're going to happen and that certainly sets people off and really perturbs them. I think there are a number of neighbors that I've spoken to who are quite concerned, uh, especially more recently mothers who are, have uh, quite a few concerns, I think, about the noise and how it's going to so We know that kids next to airports have difficulty with things like learning to read learning to do arithmetic, focusing on their studies. Uh, all those are, are quite concerning and, and have been demonstrated in the literature to be, be quite uh, uh, concerning, I think, both for kids and their development and their parents, obviously. So we want to make sure that we have a healthy environment for kids to learn in. So, as you said, there are absolutely two schools nearby. There's a lot of uh, daycare activity, a lot of day camps that are going on in the neighborhood as well. There's a lot of community activity at the community center as well involving kids. So there's a lot of kids exposed to what's going on exactly across the way here. It's a stone's throw away from these schools. Do people in this particular area have an increased risk? My suspicion is yes. And the reason for that is because, as you mentioned, we have a Gardner Expressway that borders our northern area and we have this airway expressway bordering the south, so we're really sandwiched between two contributors to this air pollution. So this particular community, I think, along the waterfront certainly has uh, greater exposure and probably even more so once this airport expands. Um, the first thing that kind of springs to mind about air pollution and, and the effects on, on people would obviously be the lungs. People think about the lungs, the air that they breathe, specifically on people who have a lot of um, airway disease. In kids, asthma. A lot of people know kids with asthma. And asthma, unfortunately, is something that's on the rise. And, and the reasons for that are still unclear to us, but one of those effects could be due to the environment. So we have to look at asthma in terms of kids. Asthma in general population, but certainly in kids, I would be quite concerned about that. Uh, with adults, especially those who've had a chronic smoking history, we worry about that because of something called emphysema, or COPD, this chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. But when you think about it, the lungs are actually a portal, a doorway into the body. It allows for air or oxygen that we breathe into our body, but so too allows the pollutants that we have in the air. Things like nitrous oxide, sulfur dioxides, ozone, small particulate matter, all these different various chemicals that can cause inflammatory reactions inside your blood vessels. And that inflammation over a long period of time causes atherosclerosis. And what's atherosclerosis? Well, that's a disease that causes things like heart disease, so your heart attacks, 
things like strokes, things like peripheral vascular disease. So people, when they're walking, can't walk a certain distance without getting fatigued and achy in their, in their muscles. I think you do see increased incidences uh, of heart disease, as I mentioned, increased exacerbations of these lung diseases, which end up having these seniors and these people with these lung diseases in hospital. And that's not where we need these people. We need them out in the community trying to be as, as uh, lively and, uh, and as active as they can be, and not in hospitals causing increased burden on our taxpayers, for example, and, and, and all of that. There certainly has been an increase in the amount of traffic in, in the community. We see that predominantly right at the Bathurst Key area where you have a line of taxi cabs that actually goes right into the intersection at times, right across the intersection where kids are crossing at time of, at the end of school. Uh, it's been a big enough concern for our counselor to try to, to advocate for a crossing guard, which fortunately has happened for the kids. So there certainly has been, I, I think, an increased volume of traffic, and, and I'm glad that the city has at least started to take note of that and put some safety measures like crossing guards in place. If we have an expansion of the airport like this, we're contributing more to this community's burden of disease, that causes more health disease. That eventually will cost us, in terms of taxpayer money, um, looking at things like our OHEP benefits and those types of things, just trying to, to treat these people as, as we should. What are we going to do? I think first of all what we need to do is we need to express our opinions. I think the worst thing we could possibly do is just throw up our hands and say, well, we're fighting against the federal government and a guy that's got millions of dollars in his pocket. How are we possibly going to win that fight? And I'm not going to kid you, it is certainly a David and Goliath fight. But it's a great fight because it's for our community. It's for our kids. It's for our seniors. We got to do something about this. It's for our waterfront. This is a great place to live. It's a great place to come out and it's a great place to sort of enjoy the outdoors in a beautiful city. And it needs to be brought back to the people. And I think the first step that we need to do with that is we need to voice our opinions. We need to get that out to our councillors. We need to talk to the mayor. We need to talk to our federal uh, ministers. We need to talk to our representation at all levels of government for that matter. Because it's about, again, our community, our city. And if we don't express ourselves, it's that indifference, I think, that allows for this expansion to happen. We have a, a huge expanse, a, a, an island here that a lot of cities would fight for. We have countries that are throwing sand into, into the ocean trying to build islands. And here we've got this great island here that we could use for recreation. I think in the past, in fact, our, our native brothers and sisters used to use this island as a place to heal. And so it's quite, uh, it's quite ironic, I think, to actually see the island used for what it's used now for the exact opposite purpose in some ways, where you'd have in the past uh, marshlands and, and forest lands and, and this, uh, this area where people would congregate and try to heal. And now look at it. Now we've got a, a place where we're, through our activities, doing the exact opposite. Again, people are attracted to the water. This is a great place to come and a great place to live and enjoy yourself. So. Why have such an industrial activity be a, a, a parking lot for airplanes when you can be a park for the people?